I am Chris from the Hypro Service Department and I'll be showing you how to work on a 9303C-HM1C hydraulically driven centrifugal pump. The tools required to work on this pump are a half inch wrench, a 916 wrench, a rubber hammer, two flat screwdrivers, a piece of metal pipe that's an inch ID by at least four inches long, a one inch PVC pipe, a 916 socket, a 5 8 socket, an inch and a sixteenth socket, a quarter inch Allen wrench, and some hydraulic oil. Let's get started. We'll start by removing the front housing with a nine sixteenth socket. On this front housing, you have a stainless steel wear ring. If there's excessive wear on the inside surface of this ring, you may notice a loss in performance of the pump. Also, if the pump is not flushed out after use, the harsh chemicals can cause excessive corrosion inside of the pump. Here's an example of a front housing from a pump that had not been flushed out after use. You can see the evidence of extreme chemical wear and corrosion even in the uh, plug area. Another potential cause in a decrease in performance could be a worn or melted impeller. You'll want to look at this surface right here. If it's excessively worn or if the pump may have been run dry, this could be melted. If so, replace the impeller. We'll go ahead and remove it with a 5 8 socket. You can use one of your screwdrivers to support the impeller. And then use the two flat screwdrivers to pry off the impeller. And examine the back side to make sure this is in good shape and it's not melted. If the pump had been run dry, the seal may be melted on this surface. Next we'll go ahead and remove the mechanical seal. You want to take this key out first. If you need to, you can take a, take a screwdriver and tap it out. Remove the friction ring. Take your two screwdrivers and pry out the mechanical seal. And examine this for any wear any surface damage from an abrasive substance and also if the seal is melted or cracked from being run dry. Here's an example of a seal that had been run dry. It is possible to remove the seat by prying it out with two screwdrivers but this will most likely damage the seal and you'd want to replace it. We're actually going to take the flange off first and take it out from the back side. So to do that, take your half inch wrench and remove these four bolts. You can pull the flange straight off of the motor. And now we'll remove the seal seat from this side. If you were going to try to reuse a seal, you'd want to put a rag down or something to something to help protect the seal from any damage or dirt. You want to make sure that you have a very clean work area. And the seal can be tapped out from the back side gently with a screwdriver. You can also look at this area in here for excessive corrosion.
Now that we've disassembled the wet end of the pump, we can get into the disassembly of the hydraulic motor. The first thing we'll do is remove the port adapters. <laughs> Notice the back of the motor is marked press and tank. Press is for pressure, that's your inlet line coming in. Tank is your outlet, that's what goes back to your tank on your hydraulic system. On that port adapter, that's also marked tank. There's a check valve inside, that you should be able to hear rattle. This basically keeps flow from going back into the motor. If you can't hear that rattle, take the snap ring out, take the poppet out and look for any sort of obstruction, clean it and reassemble it. If the hydraulic lines are hooked up backwards, it can cause damage to the motor seal. Let's take a look inside. Start by removing the bypass screw. Refer to your owner's manual how to set this properly according to your hydraulic system. Use your 9 16 wrench to take off the jam nut. There's a washer behind that. And you'll notice that behind that is a gasket that's included in the oil seal repair kit. In the event that you'd have to reuse this gasket, make sure you turn the bypass screw out of it instead of pulling it straight off and dragging that gasket across the threads and damaging it. Then use your quarter inch Allen to remove the bolts. It may be necessary to use your two flat blade screwdrivers to pry off the end plate. Placing the screwdrivers underneath these tabs and being careful not to damage the surface. At this point, you can inspect the bearing, the surface of the end plate, and the G rotor for any sort of damage or scoring that may have been caused by contaminated hydraulic oil. Next, we'll remove the G rotor housing by gently tapping it off with a rubber hammer. Inspect this inner surface for any deep scratches or scoring that may have been caused by contaminated hydraulic oil. Notice there's a number stamped into this housing. That will help you identify which hydraulic motor model you're working on. You can also measure the thickness of this housing and use that with your owner's manual to identify which model it is. Notice there's a big pin and a small pin on here to keep you from installing it incorrectly. Next, inspect the G rotor itself for any scratches or scoring and replace if necessary. Examine the G rotor pin for any gouges in here just from normal operation and replace if necessary. Next we'll remove the complete shaft and seal assembly. First remove the slinger ring. This is to help keep water out of this bearing in the event of a mechanical seal leak on the water side of the pump. It may be necessary to take your one inch pipe and press down on this retaining ring to loosen it up enough to remove it. Flip the assembly over and push out the shaft. Before removing the shaft assembly components, notice the order they're in. You have a bearing, a spacer the seal is pressed into, two O rings, another spacer, a thrust washer, thrust bearing, another thrust washer in your retaining ring. Make sure these go back in the same order they came out. To remove that retaining ring, put a corner of your screwdriver into it, twist it out, it may help to lay these components out in order on a clean surface to keep from contaminating any of these parts.
You never want to drag that lip seal over this retaining ring groove. So instead we'll remove the small retaining ring on top of the bearing and press all of these components out the other side. Push this off being careful not to damage the bearing. And we'll go to the press. Press directly on the shaft to remove the bearing and seal. At this point, examine this portion of the shaft for any excessive wear or pitting and replace as necessary. You can also examine the bearing, make sure it turns smooth and isn't tight or lumpy. That bearing is included in the hydraulic motor seal repair kit as well. You can examine the seal for any wear or damage, or if this lip is pushed out backwards the other way, the hydraulic lines were most likely reversed. To remove the seal from this cartridge, press it out. ready to reinstall. First step in reassembly will be to press the new seal into the cartridge. Place the open end of the cartridge up. Place the seal in with the lip facing up. Use that one inch piece of pipe. Being careful not to damage the lips of the seal. Press that right down into it. Now we can reassemble our shaft assembly. The first thing will be to put this retaining ring back on. Notice there's a flat side and a round side to this. You'll want to install this with the flat side facing up towards the threads. Easiest way to put this on is start it by hand, push it down on the table lock it in. Next, we have a thrust washer and again make sure these parts are totally clean and free of debris. Next, the thrust bearing, the second thrust washer, the spacer, it can go on either way. Next, we we'll want to put our new seal back on and you want to stretch this over the end of this shaft, pushing that on, and then when you put it on this side of the shaft, you want that lip facing down. Carefully work that over the edge of the shaft without folding a lip over. And now we can press the bearing back on. Place the new bearing onto the press and we'll press the shaft assembly threaded side down into the bearing. You'll feel it bottom out on this back retaining ring. This spacer may stay somewhat loose, so you'll have to try to line this up as best you can. Well, Install our two new O-rings up to the bottom of this cartridge and apply a small amount of grease to the O-rings. And then we can press this assembly back into the motor housing. Once again, making sure that spacer is as lined up as possible. And these O-rings are straight. Be careful not to pinch the O-rings when you press this in. Use your one inch piece of pipe. And press the assembly in until you feel the bottom out. 
Now we can reinstall the snap ring. As well as the small snap ring. Being careful not to damage the bearing. Once you get this back together, you notice this snap ring is slightly above that bearing. I'm going to press that down until it bottoms out on the bearing. At this point, turn the shaft. Make sure it turns nice and smooth. If it feels like it's bound up, press the shaft assembly out again and look for a damaged component or any of those spacers or washers that may have been that may have shifted before you pressed it in. Now that we've pressed the shaft assembly back into the motor housing and we've ensured that it turns freely, install a new o-ring, making sure that the o-ring groove is clean of any debris as well as the surface of the motor body. The next thing will be to install the drew order pin. Put the inner portion of the G-Rotor on first. Next, the outer portion. It's a good idea to put some hydraulic oil on the inner surface of this G-Rotor housing. Installing it like so. Good idea to turn that from here and make sure it turns nice and free. Put some more hydraulic oil on top of the G-Rotor. And then for the end plate O-ring, putting some hydraulic oil or grease down into that groove will help hold the O-ring in place. When you flip it over and install it, make sure that O-ring doesn't come out and get pinched. And then we'll reinstall our Allen bolts and torque them to 15 foot pounds in a crisscross pattern. There's where the movie magic comes in here. So far, so good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next, we can reinstall the bypass screw. Take the new gasket and thread it onto the bypass screw. You don't want to push it straight on and damage the gasket itself. So thread it on, leaving about four or five threads showing. Screw that in to the end plate all the way. Make sure that screw is tight. Then install the washer and the jam nut. Tighten that down with a 916 inch wrench. After that, you'll want to turn the shaft at this point, make sure that everything turns nice and free. If it feels bound up or you hear grinding sounds or anything like that, you want to disassemble the motor and look for any damage or debris inside. Now we can reinstall it onto the wet end of the pump. Next we'll 
put that slinger ring back onto the motor shaft. Make sure that the shaft is free of any oil. If necessary, clean it with alcohol. You want to make sure the shaft is totally dry. Next, we'll reinstall the pump flange. To do that, you want to start your four bolts by hand. And then tighten them down with your half inch wrench. Now we can install the new seal in the 3430-0332 kit is the new seal, the new seat, the new friction ring, and a new o-ring. We'll lubricate the outer portion of the seal seat. We won't be lubricating the seal itself. Put a little oil around the edge. And then you want to make sure that the seal seat surface is clean and there are, are no scratches or chips in it. And to install that, drop that straight in and use that one inch PVC pipe. Being careful not to scratch the seal surface. Push it in until you feel it bottom out. And again, make sure that it's clean of any debris. If there's any oil on this pump shaft, make sure you clean that off. You'll notice that the shaft itself has a rough surface. The reason for this is to grab onto the inside of the seal itself, so this will rotate with the shaft. And that seat stays stationary. So we'll use that PVC pipe again to install the seal, making sure that this surface is facing down towards the ceramic seat. friction ring back on. The seal will need to be compressed as much as you can get it. Drop your key in. You may need to hold this steady with a screwdriver. Install the impeller. You can turn the pump by hand, make sure that the impeller is locked onto that key. And then for the impeller nut, we'll want to put one drop of medium strength Loctite inside of it. Thread it on by hand and then tighten it down with a 5-8 socket. You don't have to run that down very tight, just get it snug. And then to reinstall the new O-ring, you want to put one side on and then stretch it so it doesn't roll off of it. And now we'll reinstall the front housing. Use your 9 16 wrench to tighten down these four bolts. Go ahead. The last thing is to reinstall the adapter ports with new O rings. And we we'll want to make sure that. The one that's marked tank corresponds with where it says tank on the end plate. To tighten these down. And that's it. This has been the 9303C-HM1C. If you have any further questions, you can call 1-800-468-3428 or visit us online at hypropumps.com.